In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can extend WCF to create custom mes message interceptors. We'll take a look at how we can create a custom message interceptor to catch both inbound and outbound traffic. We'll also take a look at how we can inspect and or modify this message before we send along its way and let it go inbound or outbound. Let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get started building on our custom interceptor, let's quickly review the solution we've already created. I first have a project that will create our, our WCF endpoint host and I've just gone ahead and left it to implement the iService interface because I don't really care about what service interface I'm using. Then I've gone ahead and I've already created a project called Diagnostics Interceptors. It's here that I'll create all my custom logic to enable me to intercept a message that's being received inbound and sent back outbound. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a class called Custom Service Host. Custom Service Host is going to implement the service host class. This class is part of the WCF namespace. I'm going to now go ahead and create my constructors just so I can have all the valid constructors. Then finally I'm going to go ahead and override the on opening. Now inside this on opening I want to do one thing. I want to go description dot behaviors dot add. And I'm going to go ahead and create our a reference to the behavior that we're going to be creating here in a minute. So I'm going to say new message diagnostics service behavior. Now don't worry if it shows me some squigglies in red here because we'll create this class in a bit. Now that I've created my custom service host, I want to go ahead and create my service host factory. This factory is what I'm going to wire up to my endpoint to allow us to hook into the WCF pipeline. So let's go ahead and create our class here. We'll call this custom service host factory. This implements the service host factory class. Okay then. Apparently it doesn't want to bring my references in for me, so let's go ahead and do that manually. Let's go ahead and change this to a public. Within this class, I want to override one method. I'm going to override the create service host. Inside of my create service host, instead of returning the base service host, I'm going to go ahead and return our new instance of our custom service host. We're going to give it our service type and our base addresses. This will allow us to use that new custom uh, service host we created which will allow us to also use that behavior we're going to create here in a second. Let's go ahead and move this to its own file so we can get a little cleaner. Now that I've created my custom factory, now I need to tell WCF to use that custom factory. Let's go over to my markup for my service host itself. The next thing I want to do is point it to my custom factory. To do this what I want to do is do factory equals and then Called, we'll copy the namespace here and we'll say custom service host. This will tell WCF to use my service host factory rather than the default one. That's all I need to do to my WCF endpoint. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and create my interceptor. Now to build my custom interceptor, let's go ahead and create a new class. We'll call this message And then we're going to go ahead and implement the i dispa oh, i client message inspector along with the i dispatch message inspector. I'm going to go ahead and make this public. You'll see it's giving me some squiggly, so I need to go ahead and implement some stuff. So let's go ahead and tell it to implement. Now, to do something with these, I don't need to do a whole lot, but what I do need to do is on my before send request, let's just go and tell it to return null. That's fine. Let's remove my throw exception because we don't really care about this method at this point. After receive request, we want to do a return null as well there. And then we're going to do all the magic in the before send reply. The before send reply is going to be a little lengthy, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in some code to save some time. 
and then we'll talk about the code I just pasted. Now the before send reply does a couple things. Checks to see if my reply is in fault state. If it's not in the fault state and it's not empty, then we want to do something. So we'll then say make sure the action's not empty. The reason for this is you want to make sure there's actually a route that's being attempted inside the header. Otherwise it's going to do things on connection and mex exchanges. Then I'm going to go and grab the reader at the body context of my message. I'm going to read the outer XML for this. What I need to do is be able to get my message as a string. I'm going to then do call into the method called determine log message diagnostics. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then finally, what is extremely important is I'm going to rebuild my message. The reason for this is when I call this get reader at body contents, it's an XML dictionary reader. You read it once, it, expand, it removes the content from the message. If you try to forward it on, it's not going to work appropriately. So what do I need to do my my rebuild message need to fix my formatting here will basically grab the body that XML string I pulled out a second ago. I'll create a new message object basically with the same information. I will add all the properties to it and I'll replace the message my new message with my old message basically telling the runtime that I've done something with it but let's go ahead and swap it out and keep it forwarding. Again, this rebuild message is critical. You'll get some exception if you don't you do this. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and take a look at my determinant log message. This is going to allow me to inspect the body of it. In my case here, I just want to care about the size of it in bytes. So I'm going to grab the body. I'm going to grab the size of it in bytes and divide it by 1024, which will give it to me in kilobytes. And I'm going to write that to disk. And that's it. That's my interceptor. Now, of course, I could do a lot of things here, but for this example, we just want to take the message size and let it go. Now, finally, the last class we need to create is our behavior class. This is that class that we stubbed out a few minutes ago. So let's go ahead and create this now. And I'm going to save some time by telling it to create this class. And then this does have a little bit of code, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this as well. So I implement the iService behavior on my service behavior. Going to go ahead and override the validate, the add bindings, let those do nothing. Then finally I'm going to say on my apply dispatch behavior, I'm going to go ahead and loop through all my dispatchers, grab all my endpoints, and I'm going to add that message interceptor to each of my endpoints at runtime. This will allow me to actually intercept my message. Now that we've created our four classes, our service host, our service host factory, our interceptor and behavior, it's actually time to get this party started so I can actually see if it will actually work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come over to my host factory and I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. And I'm going to run my application. Well, before I do that, let's go ahead and get here so I can launch the test client. So my test client is loading right now. So we now have our test client up right. So let's go ahead and say get data. We'll give some value here. It's completely irrelevant. Let's go ahead and click invoke. And sure enough, I'm able to intercept my message before it's being re re replied to to my caller. So I check to see if it's in fault state. It's not. It's not empty. I have a header. There it is. Demo and there's the get data response. I can grab the message body out. You can see there is some data there. I entered two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can come down here and I can log. If we look in our output window, you'll see the message size. And I can rebuild and resend my message. And if I should go back to my WCF test client, you'll see that I actually have the message there. So as you can see, creating a WCF interceptor that will do something like catch the message, do something, look at it, log it, and send along its way is not difficult. It takes four classes. It takes about 30, 40 lines of code total. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.